Every time I see an article or video like this, the first word that always comes to mind is audacity. The audacity of these women to not only play with and change the word of God to suit their own wicked desires, but to boldly declare that they deserve something that the Lord has prohibited. The word of God is clear on this issue. The pastor is a role that is specifically for men. It's an office for men. First Timothy 2 and 3 make that very clear. So let's read the first paragraph of this ridiculous letter, this open letter to the SBC. For centuries, people have told women they are not as valuable to God's work in the world as men are. Even today, men are taking actions against women who are ministering, leading, and pastoring to spread the love and grace of Jesus Christ. That is nothing but pride, okay? Pride, arrogance, and a desire for self-exaltation, okay? That's all it is. I will have my way, and I don't care what the Bible says. Matter of fact, I'm going to misinterpret the Bible to fit my agenda, because I really don't care about the glory of God. I'm seeking my own glory. And that's what's happening here. And it's for that very reason that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. One of the ways that you can tell someone truly fears the Lord is that they tremble at his word. They wouldn't dare step over his word and impose their own desire. There is a literal fear when it comes to the admonishment of scripture. Remember in the wilderness when Moses brought the two million plus Israelites out of Egypt and into the wilderness. Remember how God would literally cause fire to break out on the edges of the camp, engulfing people because they were thinking thoughts against him, complaining and even desiring that they were back in Egypt. I've read things like that in the Bible and I've had to just put the Bible down and step away from it for a moment. This God is no joke, okay? And one day he will put your light out and you will come before him. Galatians 1.8, these women are cursed. And you wanna know the scariest thing about that curse? God will give you exactly what you desire. And they don't kill you and cast you off into hell. But the text says, obey your leaders and submit to them. Folks, I don't write the mail. I just deliver it. You don't have to like that, but you can't argue with it. The Bible makes it clear that there exists within the church spiritual leadership. Now let me hasten to say that even within the context of that leadership, we always see that leadership referred to in the plural. Now I know that there are those who have different ecclesiology. I know that there are those who believe in, you know, single pastor models and so on. I did not come here to fight tonight. I respect your right to be wrong. When you see elders in the New Testament, it's in the plural. You see leadership here, it's in the plural. The apostles were in the plural. And so the idea here is that the church is led by a group of men, amen? And yes, I, I did say men. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's amazing to me that even that has become controversial. The idea that the elders in the church are to be males. God loves women and I do too. Amen? Amen. But there are things that women are called to do. There's other things that they're not. And it should be no more offensive that the Bible says that men are to lead in the church and serve as elders, then it should be offensive that women are the ones who get to have babies. Amen. <laughs> now I've seen that happen and it's not something I want to do. <laughs> I'm just acknowledging the fact that there are some things you guys get to do that we don't get to do.